let's see how you can create a private repository to store your Java projects. And each Java project can be created and edited using the Eclipse IDE tool. Okay, let's see how we can do that. First of all, log into your GitHub account uh, and make sure uh, your your account is actually educational so you can create a private repository. So now, first of all, let's go to click on plus over here and say new repository. So over here, I, I'm going to create a, a repository which is going to store a number of Java projects. For example, if you're studying the course ECS 2030, you can simply put, for example, 2030 like that. Or uh, you can just put any, uh, we can just put workspace uh, 2030. It's completely up to you. Okay, for now, why, did, why don't I simply say 2030? Okay, so it's going to be the 2030 uh, workspace. Okay, and then I'm going to make it private. Okay, and then as a good uh, as a good practice, you should also include a readme file to put an introduction for your uh, projects yeah, for your repository. And for the ignore, I'm just going to ignore that for now. But I'm going to show you how you can exclude uh, certain files that you don't want to really commit to. Uh, you don't want to push back to the online uh, repository. For example, the bin folder for each uh, Eclipse project. So I can say create repository. And so now I do have a 2030 uh, workspace. Okay. What I will do is I will now go back to my uh, local IDE over here, GitHub desktop. And then I'm going to clone that particular uh, private repository online. And to do that, I forgot I should really come back here and say I want to clone or download, right? So I will click on clone or download. You can definitely try this option here if you can just automatically uh, launch your GitHub desktop, uh, the panel for cloning your repository, or let's do it manually. Click on the link and right click and say copy the URL. Let's go back to your GitHub uh, IDE and then you can say file and then clone repository. And then we're going to say under URL tab. And then for URL, we're going to paste the URL that we just copied. And now for workspace, let's say over here, I do have a folder called 2030 under which I'm going to have a repository folder called 2030 workspace, right? So under 2030, other subfolders can store other stuff, maybe slides or other lecture notes for your uh, 2030 course, okay? That's, that's kind of the, uh, the plan I have in mind. In your case, you can feel free to adapt to your own uh, preference. Okay, so now what I will do is let's go back here and then we'll choose the workspace to be 2030 and say open. So that means under 2030 on my desktop, I'm going to have a private, private repository clone for 2030 workspace. Okay, and under 2030 workspace is going to be, there's going to be a number of Java projects. And then I can say clone. Okay, as soon as it, it is done, let's see, you can see under 2030, we have a 2030 workspace clone from the web. And then under that, it simply got a readme file over here. You can actually try to put in, uh, I should have double click. Anyway, so you can modify the contents for the readme so you can give a short description of what this uh, workspace is, is about. And as you're adding each new project, maybe for your lab or for your assignments, you can also put some description. Uh, short description for each project. Okay, that's just an example. But you really keep updating this uh, readme file. Okay, now let's try to add a new project just uh, as an illustration. Okay, what I will do is I will first launch Eclipse. And then I'm going to select the workspace for the Eclipse to be 2030 workspace. Okay, let's browse over here. And then what I will do is I will go to my desktop and then I will go inside 2030 and then I'll choose 2030 workspace. And then I will say open. Okay, and then I'll say launch. So that's going to be my workspace for all the Java projects. Okay, and then I'll go to the workbench. And then over here, let's create a new Java projects. So I can go file new Java projects. Okay, over here I can say, for example, hello world. Okay, hello world. And then I can say finish. Okay, as soon as I'm done, let's just try to check the uh, directory structure. 
So over here, you can see that under the repository 2030 workspace, we have a subfolder for our new Java project, Hello World, and currently the bin for Java code, uh, Java bytecode, and also source for the Java classes are simply just empty. Okay, so we'll see that later on, whenever we add any new Java class into the source folder, some corresponding bytecode.class file will also be put in the bin folder. However, somehow the GitHub is smart enough to figure out the bin folder should be excluded so that we don't have to add in any exclusive uh, rule to that. Okay, so what we got to do is we, we got to go over here to say under source and we're going to create a new of class, okay, let's say hello world tester. And then we'll say, choose the main method and say finish, okay. And then we we'll simply put something to print out. System.out.println. And then I'll say hello world, okay, over here. And then make sure it can execute and get my expected output, which is hello world and say run as Java application. Okay, hello world over here, good. So now if I go back to my GitHub desktop over here, so these are the stuff you can simply just also commit and push to your GitHub account. Basically, these are the, just the settings of your uh, Eclipse projects. You can just uh, also push, um, push them back to your online, okay? So now I will simply say summary over here, I will just say uh, hello world, print, message. And for detail, you can just uh, add more description. I'll leave that to you. And we can say commit, and then we'll push to online, right? Remember commit and push. Okay, as soon as I'm done with this, let's go back to the web browser over here and refresh the page. You will see that over here, uh, there has been a hello world project over here, and we got settings, we got source, we got all, all sorts of stuff over here. So everything, including the source code of your Java file, you can see which is Java world tester. You can click on that and then it shows you very nicely the layout of your Java file. Not only that, if you go back here, you can see for the hello world, you also keep the settings of your projects, which is nice to keep it there. And they don't take that much space anyway. Okay. So the, what, what I would do now is I'm going to just change this a little bit to say rather than hello world. So I'm going back to my local desktop, the, I, the Eclipse IDE. I say hello GitHub. So let's say, of course, every time you, if you make some meaningful changes to your Java code, you can always commit and push the change back to your GitHub account online. Okay. So I change this, and of course, let's make sure if I run it, it's hello GitHub. So the program has been changed. So let's commit and push the new change to the web. So what I will do is I'll go back to changes over here. You can see that it shows me exactly here. So you can see the uh, the orange color here is the current version, hello world. And the green version is the new change to be committed. Okay, so I change from world into GitHub. So I, what I will do is I will say new, uh, hello message. And then I will say from world to GitHub. Okay. And then I would say commit, and then remember to push. Okay, after that, after it is done, let me go back to the web. And now this time, if I go back to your 2030 workspace and just refresh just to be safe. And then if I go back there, first of all, you can see that uh, the commits over here, if I click on that, it's kind of the history of commits. Initial version over here, and that's the first version where we had our uh, hello world over here. You can see that at the, at the end is a hello world, right? So now if you go back there uh, to the previous version, uh, the latest version over here, new hello world message, right? That's the, uh, that's the summary and also the detailed description we put. If you click on that, it's gonna show you the thing you changed, which was from world into GitHub. So you can see it's a very nice way to keep track of the changes to your software. So you can always uh, back up your project properly. Okay, so that one's done. So what we'll do is, I mean, let me show you one more thing. Let's say, for example, let me show you a very uh, simple example, like how you can exclude certain things from your uh, 
repository to be updated. So now let's say under the 2030 workspace, for example, if I have something, I'll just call it local uh, folder only, which means for some reason, let's say this folder here is only supposed to be uh, manipulated only locally. So you don't need to really push that uh, to the uh, online GitHub repository for some reason, okay? And then over here, uh, let's say we just, let me just, let me be a little bit lazy here. Let me just copy something over here and then go into there and then just re, uh, rename that. I'll just say junk.txt, okay? Okay, let me, I'll simply say this is junk and should not be uploaded or pushed to the online repository. It's only local, okay? So now, as soon as I go back to my GitHub desktop, uh, GitHub desktop IDE, you can see that by default, this local folder only and junk.txt is included for the next commit, uh, next uh, committed, next change to be committed. So now, how can I exclude this uh, from now on? What I can do is I can go to repository and go to repository settings. And now I can go to ignore files and over here, I can simply just go for, so these are the default that uh, GitHub actually uh, identify for you for Eclipse project, so you don't want to touch them. All, all I can do is I can add a new rule over here. For example, I can say local folder only, I can put a folder name over here. So that means everything under this folder is going to be excluded for the future commits. I said save, you can see that one has been uh, excluded and because we modify the ignore so this is the new thing we're going to commit okay so now I'll simply say summary I would say exclude I'll just say ignore local folder okay and then I can say commit and then I can say push okay once it is done let's just go back here and go back to our 2030 workspace repository. And now if we refresh, you can see that the local folder only folder is not pushed to here because it was ignored. And at the same time, if you look at a git ignore fo uh, file, the local folder only has been updated, right? So that's kind of uh, the, the thing you can also make use of. But of course, if you only store let's say only a Java projects inside this workspace folder, you may not need this feature here, but I'm just showing you just in case if there's any stuff you only want to store locally, but not really on your online repository. This is what you can do to exclude uh, by using the ignore feature.